Leading the revolution of talk radio. Doug. Doug. Earth. Earth. On AM News Talk 1360. Hey, Greg, real quick before I go back to Dr. Weck, do you still have Juan Williams' phone number? Yeah. Give him a call and see if he can put us in touch with Crowdhammer. All right? I want to get Charles Crowdhammer on this show oh, so bad. Right. You he, have no he, he, idea. He, Pardon me? Does he go? Would he go? Does he go on talk shows? Does I don't know. I, we're going to find out. But I had Juan Williams on yesterday. I, I'm mind. assuming you're going to get in tight. Get in tight on the mic. What a, what a mind. Oh, what a brain. Uh, I had Juan Williams on yesterday, uh, who is with, um, actually with NPR, and he's written a book called Enough About the Civil Rights Professional Victims, the Jesse Jacksons, the L. Sharptons of the World. This is a guy, by the way, with it. This is interesting. Bill Cosby gave a speech, as you know. Yes. And many of the, what I call the professional victims, the Jesse Jacksons, L. Sharptons, blah, blah, blah. A lot of people get down on Cos. Bill Cosby has a progressive track record beyond the realm of belief. I mean, this guy's given millions and millions he of has, dollars to yeah. black universities, supported every right cause, yes. blah, blah, blah. But he stepped out of line once, and he was condemned. Juan Williams, who was a man of impeccable liberal credentials, has written this book. He was telling me... He cannot get on CBS, NBC, or ABC. They will not interview him vis-a-vis the book. And he blamed it on white liberals who own and operate the networks, who are so afraid of offending the black civil rights establishment, the Jessies and the Al's of the world, that they're refusing to have the man on. Now, I I said to this man of of impeccable liberal credentials, I said, look, I believe right-wingers are a little bit paranoid when it comes to liberal conspiracy, but as a liberal, you must be shaking your head and feeling a little like Joe Lieberman. Ditto Bill Cosby feeling a little bit like Joe Lieberman, too, because... Bill Cosby got off the reservation, said things that I didn't even think were that controversial, quite frankly, and caught all kinds of hell for it. Well, there, there's no question. And I have – I've personally experienced this, uh, I Did remember, you? years ago in, in a local limited sense uh, um, with a congressional race. Uh, we had a congressman named Bill Moorhead. Oh, yeah. And Bill Moorhead had been around. He was a very nice guy, uh, lawyer, uh, Ivy League gentleman. He had some problems uh, – a little, bit, a little bit of drinking, and as it turned out later, life maybe some stuff. But he, he was a good, a good congressman, and he was very good for African Americans and for Jews. You know, he, he was a decent, solid guy. And um, Bird Brown, who was uh, very bright, uh, young, but you know, he was a young African American attorney, and he was in a hurry, and he had every right to be, but he decided to buck Moorhead in the primary. And I remember uh, I came out, you know, from Moorhead. I was getting started in politics, whether this was 68 or 70 or so on. Well, that uh, they used to call it the 7-Eleven Club, the, the 7th and 11th Ward. Uh, wards, you know, the liberals and, and so on, a big percentage of them were Jews, but there were many, many others. And boy, uh, they were very unhappy with me for not, uh, you know, going. Oh, is that right? With, you know, with, uh, so, you know, as I say, somewhat similar. But uh, you, have ex- you have seen this with uh, both the right wing and with the left wing, that if you do anything or say anything vis-a-vis an issue, a candidate, a, an election uh, issue or so on that is not in tune, right, within right. the firm, rigid parameters of their dichotomy, then forget about they it. They blow you off the reservation. Yeah, right, look, exactly. look at Lieberman. And just one of the – you like Krauthammer too. Isn't the guy great? Oh, what a brain. He, and, he is one of my heroes. Uh, of course, I used to read him with the New Republic. Oh, Did I you go remember back that? to the yeah. New Republican yeah. commentary. Um, been writing for commentary. Isn't it, by the way, isn't it fascinating the way that that crew of Krauthammer, Kondracki, and uh, who's the Fred other one? Barnes, and, and Fred Barnes are all New Republican. All big new. Every T and R people. Well, I'll give, and, uh, I'll give you. I'll give you two more. I'll give you two more. Two more. One of the most popular bloggers is a man named Andrew Sullivan, who's oh, out Andrew of the New Sullivan, Republic, of and he was the editor in chief. Last, but I did TRB for a while yeah, too, yeah. and of course Kinsley is still around. Yeah, Mike still writes twice a week. He's a on our guy, and last but not least, if you remember Mickey Kaus from New yes, Republic, Kaus, he yeah. has Kaus files on the internet, and oh. then there's a new book out about how only liberals can win the war on terror by a man named Peter Beinert, B I E N A R T. And we well, should, he's wait, he's I think he's the editor. Uh, 
No, it's I just do with them. Yeah, I, you're right. Yeah. You're right. I yeah, don't read the Republic the way yeah, I used yeah, to. Yeah. And then just to to really type it off with TNR, Jake Weisberg is still around. Oh Leon yes, yes. here. What yeah. a magazine! God, that no, was question. Like, no, no question. No question. Now I want to talk real a uh, couple things about Israel. I see the guy from Hezbollah is all of a sudden coming. Right, yeah, yeah. Well, That's gee, if we had known, we would have this. Yes, how do you that? And 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 now the worm has started to turn a little bit. A lot of people in Lebanon are ticked off at this guy. So Israel certainly had and effect. But having said that, in the eyes of the world, at least as we speak, Israel lost. They didn't even get those two soldiers back. And Omer may or may not survive. And as well, bad I, as Omer may have know. been, I don't know who you're going to put in there in this place. Well, uh, I think you're going to have to, have you to know, I, I converse from time to time with my Israeli cousin. Uh, he's my first cousin, uh, his mother um, and my father, brother, sister. And um, we, we've, you know, visited... Uh, most of the time, I over there, and he's been here a couple of times. And he had been uh, in the Air Force uh, for many years, although he was an air attaché at uh, diplomatic offices uh, in Africa and so on. But we talked, and uh, there's no question that Olmert and uh, other people, Peretz, uh, the Secretary of Defense, uh, Minister, Minister of Defense, who should never have been given that position, uh, they whether they got sucked in by the Air Force generals who told him that they could win that war, basically, by oh, yeah. constant bombardment from the air, um, whatever, whether they were chicken uh, because of what happened in Lebanon going back to 1982. In any event, failure to send in large ground forces was a big, big uh, now, I'll tell you another. I will tell you what is another failure. Uh, my, I've got two sources on this. I, Because of the Internet, I read the Jerusalem Post. I'm reading most of the Israeli newspapers. So they're all online. You can, you can get them all online. Yeah. And I read a lot of the op-ed, and we've had a fellow on the show who has dual American-Israeli citizenship, a young man by the name of, uh, of Josh Wander. Um, oh, yeah. There is also a consensus, and I think it's Halatz, however you say it, which is a, a very interesting newspaper. And I, but my point is, there's a consensus within certain quarters of the Israeli press, something I happen to agree with, that Israel was also spooked by world opinion, by yes. what the world was we'll saying. Say, yeah. Let me finish my point. I'm sorry. I never could understand why Israel's going to be hated no matter what they do. Why would you try and worry about PR for the world? I agree with you completely. It does not make any difference. And I'm going to I'm going to say something that may sound like Jewish paranoia, but uh, I believe it. Uh, you know, and I've grown up, uh, grew up in Christian neighborhoods, and I did. Uh, I've done quite well uh, uh, for the most part. Uh, I, I think I told you once tonight that I was elected president of the YMCA, That's the right. University of Pittsburgh. Right? Christian Association. So I got a pretty good track record, but um, there's no question in my mind that if this nation, which we know is Israel, populated by Jews, was the nation of, um, uh, you know, pick a name, Lachovia, populated by Lachovians, right. and it was everything else, though, everything else, but it's not a Jewish nation, but it's a democracy, and they got uh, Muslims living over there, and they're big allies with the U.S. and uh, surrogate for the U.S., voting with the U.S. and the U.N. all the time, and so on and so forth. Do you think that there would be the kind of world opinion that exists today sure. against Israel? There's no question about sure, it. This a is a Jewish thing. This is an anti-Semitic thing. There's it, no it, question. Yeah. Let, let's take it one step further. Uh, again, I'm an Internet junkie now. <laughs> God help me. I got that computer. I also make it a point on a weekly basis to check out French press, German press, British uh, press. Okay? French, uh, All right, but here's my okay. point. When you read some of the op-ed writers and the logic that they employ in making their argument, this has nothing to do with the Palestinian people or the Lebanese. These people just don't like Jews. That's right. Whether they, you're an Israeli right. Jew or a Jew from the Bronx or right. Cyril Weck from school, they don't care. They don't like Jews. It's just they, I they, would almost feel better if they wrote, listen, I just don't like Jews. They did not like them in the 10th century or in the 15th century or in the 19th and 20th century. But they try century. and cover it up with this intellectual yeah. well, logic that exactly. is so illogical and, you can be led to no other conclusion. And you know, man, just think just think and boy if, if i could strike a deal with the devil the old dorian gray uh, situation maybe uh, just to be around for this 
two, three generations of the Muslims in France having eight, nine, ten kids per family and those Frenchmen having 1.2, 1.4, whatever it is, in three generations, you got a democracy in which every vote is the same as another vote. I, God, what I would love to see what's going to happen in France. And similarly, Italy. my wife just came back from her native Norway and she says she could not believe it. Uh, the largest church edifice in Oslo is a Muslim mosque. Um, the Muslims are, are there in significant numbers. And the Scandinavians and Norwegians and the Danes and the Swedes, you know, in their, uh, shall we call it, uh, social uh, liberalism, their... their uh, uh, their their passivity to a very great extent and so on. When is the world... I should have brought to you, my God, I'm kicking myself, I'll have to fax it to you tomorrow. It's one of those things that comes across... In fact, it was given to me by the guy at Pittsburgh Video Tech today when I was doing my 6.25 a.m. hit, and it's got about two and a half pages, and it's one of those things that's a quiz, and they do these quizzes, and they ask about all these things, the bombing of the barracks in Lebanon, and then they do the, the you know, the, the World Trade Center, and they do everything else, and then you have your choices, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the choices, let's say, and one might be, it was a Catholic priest, it was a Jewish rabbi, I'm making up one, okay? And so, and the fourth item in each one of these, of which there are about 20, is Muslim men between the ages of 17 and 25. And every single one of them, man, this just leaps up. You know, let me, let me talk about this stuff. If, if Orthodox Jews were the ones who were terrorists, I'll tell you, man, I would be the first to say that every long-bearded, black, uh, black bearded Orthodox Jew coming through an airline yeah. assembly, you, you're darn well, you profile him. You're not going to hear anything from me. And if it happens to be a Catholic priest, if it has to be blonde women between the ages of 40 and 45, you know, we'll, we, we can't do a single thing here. Yeah, it's crazy. Huh? It's, crazy. It's, it's unbelievable. And you were talking about Norway and, of course, Holland. Look what happened with oh, the cartoons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've talked all the time about Oriana Falacci, who's on trial now yeah, for yeah, having yeah. Written this yeah. book, how Europe has literally ceded itself yes. to the Muslims. Italy, I didn't realize that except oh, Italy. Oh, sure. France, well, France is chickened out of everything. <laughs> under this and what side. hypocrites, though. They treat their Muslims oh, yeah. in southern France, okay? When you leave Israel out of the equation and you're dealing only with an internal matter of a sociological nature, they treat their Muslims worse than almost than we treated African Americans in this country in the South for many years. Cyril Wecht is the guest on AM News Talk 1360. Let's do a 180. You were in. In New Orleans, um, were you involved in? I want to get an overview, all right? Because I see television, they're saying it's not what it should be. And I'm saying, well, an entire city was wiped out. It's only been a year. What do you expect? And other people say it's better, blah, blah, blah. So the truth is probably somewhere in the middle of all that. So I want to get your impressions, number one. And this thing with this memorial hospital and this euthanasia and what is yeah, and is not yeah. transpiring right, there. Well, we'll do that. We oh, come okay. back on AM News Talk 1360. Wait a minute. We're, we're back with one Sir. Of the, one of the hosts. On well, the Fox, Fox and Friends, Friends is Edie is it, Hill. No, no. The, this That's morning, Edie Tarbox was a Pittsburgh. Ki Kieran and, Ki and Kiki. Uh, Greg, who's Kieran and Kiki? Tiki um, is a football player, I'm told. Tiki, he was. Tiki he was a football He's talking player. about Tiki Barber. And I'm pretty sure the last so, wait, name wait, 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 Barber. Tiki Barber was a football Barber, player. Well, right. listen, I'm talking about He plays for the New York Giants. He was on, uh, at, at 625, which uh, Dr. Wecht, I know, uh, referred to. Yeah. Yeah, as Fox and Friends first. Tiki Barber, who plays for the Giants, always is, is always there on Tuesday. I see. And Kieran Chetri. Did he interview you, Tiki Barber? Yes. Did he do a good job? Yes. Good. Well, there's a reason yeah. for that. You know, they pump the questions to these guys. Well, you yeah, they, 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 they called me last night. No, no, I'm not saying that. That's not my point. My point oh. is that Tiki Barber did not make up the questions that he gave you. Somebody no. hands Tiki yeah, Barber yeah, those I questions. Because yeah. in watching these but different shows. right? He was a professional football yeah, player. Yeah, he still right? is. Yeah. He still is or was? He still is. He still, still is. He is? Yeah, still is professional and he, football and, player. And, and he's, a, he's a, a, a host on a Just national Just once a week he does this thing on oh. Fox. Yeah. Once, maybe twice By the way, by the way, quick question. Quick question. How many shows have you been on the last week, week and a half? Who'd you do? 
Well, I you did, did so I many. Did, I, I did so many. I, you know, I did Larry King twice. I did Nancy. Now there's Gray. a man who's yeah, failing yeah, as yeah, an yeah, interviewer. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah. I didn't uh, Nancy Grace. She was away, but the the, the woman that, that 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 takes her place is is, is she's trying to emulate uh, and outdo Nancy Grace, which is impossible. Uh, yeah, I've done uh, <laughs> I've done all kinds of Fox shows. I've done all kinds of MSNBC shows. Um, I've done um, Canadian TV, Australian.